Welcome back, Physics 112 folks. I'm making this one to help you out with 3, 4, and 6 in Unit 2-2. So number 3, and this is one that's probably going to give you a little bit of trouble. The one thing I would point out, they're talking about a copper wire, and the radius is given in the problem. All right, so that distance right there is given, which, by the way, means you should be able to calculate that area quite easily. So I, I drew kind of a picture of the wire here. First of all, let me talk about what they're asking for when they talk about drift velocity. So if we think of a charge carrier here, and I'm going to think about a plus, even though they're actually electrons, but we always talk about with the electrical current, we always uh, do that assuming positive charge carriers. The motion of that thing is highly chaotic. All right, so these things are bouncing around and just kind of moving all over the place, you know. But overall, if there's a potential, it, even though the motion's highly chaotic, there would be this overall movement to the right. And the rate at which the electrons are moving, that's called your drift velocity. I put right over here, drift velocity would be like if I took this distance, total distance that the electron moved along the wire, and divided by the time to do so. Now, electrons and atoms, by the way, you know, when they're attached, when they're in their nucleus, or I'm sorry, in their orbits going round and round and round, it's not uncommon to see like 10 to the 6 meter per second. However, drift velocities, these are going to be much, 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 much smaller. This, these will probably be something like centimeter per minute or maybe even centimeter per hour. All right, so what you want to do with this problem is kind of work it by dimensional analysis. First of all, they gave us a current in the problem. I'm just going to use the 5 amps, which I'm going to write as 5 coulomb per second. And what you want to do is just do a series of unit conversions uh, basically, or I should say a series of multiplications, it's not really unit conversion, until it works out to meter per second. All right, so I kind of got started here. If we multiply by in one electron, there's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Units now, these would cancel, would be electrons per second. They gave a number in there that was an electron density, <clears throat> 1.1 times 10 to the 29th. Um, and this actually should be in the bottom. Oops. Um, electrons in one cubic meter. I'm sorry about my crummy writing. All right, now, um, if we kind of look at what this works out, the electrons cancel, these coulombs cancel. We now have cubic meters per second. There's just like one more multiplication, and I don't want to give it away. Um, of, oh, of how to get to this, but you know, remember you got this area here and you want this quantity to work out to meter over seconds and then you'll have the drift velocity. Okay, so short answer is do this by dimensional analysis. All right, number four. It says, in the Bohr theory of the hydrogen atom, in the seventh excited state, the electron is moving at, all right, so they're giving you a speed seventh state this is in red so you might have third fourth or fifth state but you have a state and a speed 4.47 times 10 to the fourth meter per second moving in a circular path so just you know model this like so something moving in a circle the speed you're given is equal to distance over time the distance is one circumference the radius is given in the problem, so you should be able to calculate that. So you should be able to calculate the time. Now, once you have the time, and it's going to be really, really small, calculate the number of times that this thing goes around in one second. And then you can actually calculate a current for that. Because remember, current's delta Q over delta T. And if you take the number of times it goes around times the charge per electron, divide by the time, you'd have the current. Um, I suppose you have, actually also, once you have the time, I suppose you could just take this charge and divide by the delta T, and that would work out the delta T like um, originally from here, and that should work out just fine too. You're going to get a pretty massive current. I think you'll be surprised. Uh, keep in mind when you try to put the answer in, it says in milliamp. So make sure you convert to milliamp. Milli means 10 to the minus third. Otherwise, it won't take your answer. All right, let's take a look at number six. All right, so six is one of these resistance questions.
Okay. So it says something about an experiment requires, okay, aluminum. You're going to have to look some numbers up. It's going to have a resistivity, and it's going to have a, oh, I wish I had my book here, but it's going to have some sort of coefficient that's temperature related. I'll just say that, some sort of temperature related coefficient. Okay, you're going to have to look those buck, uh, both up. This one is linked to the geometry. So resistance is directly proportional to the length falls off with area. I'm sure that's going to come up in this problem. This one is related, related to temperature changes, and they change linearly. Oh, and I think I forgot. Let's see, this looks something like... Uh, constant... Oh, you're going to have to go through your book because I don't remember how this is formulated. But you're going to have to look for a, a linear relationship between resistance and temperature. It looks something like this. Something like something like that and you're given a temp uh, resistance at a certain temperature you're going to have to look this value up for aluminum somehow some combination of these two equations should get that one done for you not the best description i've ever gave but hey it's your homework all right folks that should uh, get you rolling on that uh, have a great day